Hi, thanks for watching BibleMountain.com. In this video, we're going to read from Exodus 25 and talk about cheap church buildings reflecting cheap theology. In our society, there's a tendency to frown upon expensive church buildings. In Exodus 25, we read about the Israelites building the tabernacle, and they used very expensive materials to build the tabernacle. Now, part of the reason they did that is because God told them to, but also the use of expensive materials was a reflection of the fact they believed Yahweh was worthy of an expensive tabernacle. In our society, when we hesitate to build expensive churches, we use the reasoning that there's better use for that money, either missions or helping the poor. And there's truth to that. But we also need to consider that perhaps our hesitancy to build expensive church buildings is a reflection of a low opinion of God. It might be a reflection of an attitude that says that God is not worthy of an expensive church building. So let's start reading in Exodus 25. The context of this is God has the Israelites at Mount Sinai. He is giving them the Mosaic Law. Previous to this, God had given them a criminal justice system. Now God has given them instruction about building him a tabernacle. So let's start reading at verse 1. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the sons of Israel to raise a contribution for me. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall raise my contribution. Notice the word contribution. It occurs twice. This indicates that this was voluntary. God was not requiring each person to give something. He was making this a voluntary donation. Also notice the phrase, whose heart moves him. That also indicates that this was voluntary. Verse 3. This is the contribution which you are to raise from them. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet material, fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, porpoise skins, acacia wood, oil for lighting, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastpiece. Let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them. So notice the materials, gold, silver, and setting stones. Setting stones referred to gemstones. These were expensive materials that they were collecting to build this tabernacle. We see here the word sanctuary that tells us the purpose of these materials was to build a sanctuary for God. Notice the word dwell. Yahweh indicated that he intended to live amongst the Israelites in this sanctuary. Verse 9. According to all that I am going to show you, as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture, just so you shall construct it. Notice the word show. This tells us that Yahweh did not merely tell Moses to build this. Yahweh showed Moses how to build it. Yahweh showed Moses what it was supposed to look like. Verse 10. They shall construct an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, and one and a half cubits wide, and one and a half cubits high. Notice the word ark. Do not think of Noah's ark. This was not a boat. This was a box that they were to keep in the tabernacle to keep things in. A cubit is about 18 inches, and so this ark was about 45 inches long, 25 inches wide, and 25 inches high. Verse 11. You shall overlay it with pure gold. Inside and out you shall overlay it, and you shall make a gold molding around it. You shall cast four gold rings for it, and fasten them on its four feet. And two rings shall be on one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it. You shall make poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. So, the ark itself was supposed to be overlaid with pure gold. Again, they used very expensive materials for this. Notice also it refers to a gold molding around it. We talked about gold rings on it. And then there were poles to carry it, and they were overlaid with gold. So again, a lot of expensive materials went into this ark. Verse 14. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark with them. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark. They shall not be removed from it. You shall put into the ark the testimony which I shall give you. Notice the word testimony. I mentioned this was basically a box. The testimony is what they were supposed to put in the box. We know what the testimony is based on Exodus 34. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. It came about when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand as he was coming down from the mountain. So we see here the testimony refers to two stone tablets 
that had the Ten Commandments written on them, and that is what was supposed to be kept in the ark. Verse 17, You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide. You shall make two cherubim of gold, make them of hammered work at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim of one piece with the mercy seat at its two ends. So here they were told to make a mercy seat. The mercy seat was the lid that went on the ark. Notice it was made of pure gold. And notice there were cherubim on it. They were also made of gold. Verse 20. The cherubim shall have their wings spread upward, covering the mercy seat with their wings and facing one another. The faces of the cherubim are to be turned toward the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony which I will give to you. There I will meet with you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak to you about all that I will give you in commandment for the sons of Israel. Notice the word top. This tells us that the mercy seat went on top of the ark. The mercy seat was the lid of the box. Notice the word testimony. Again, they put the testimony in the ark. The testimony were these two stone tablets that contained the Ten Commandments. So again, in our society, there's a tendency to frown upon using expensive materials to build a church building. And our reasoning is there's better use for that money, either in missions or to help the poor, the widows, and orphans. But in Exodus 25, we see the Israelites build a tabernacle, and they used very expensive materials to build it. They used expensive materials because God told them to, but also they believed that God was worthy of those expensive materials. And in our society, when we hesitate to use expensive materials to build church buildings, there's some truth to our reasoning that there's better use for that money. Yes, we need to take care of the poor and widows and orphans, and yes, we need to engage in missions. But we also have to consider the possibility that our hesitancy to use expensive materials, our hesitancy to build expensive church buildings, is a reflection of a low opinion of God. It might be a reflection of bad theology. It might be a reflection of an attitude that thinks that God is not worthy of an expensive church building. And it's something we have to think about and ponder. If you haven't already joined my email list, please do so. First of all, it is free. By signing up, you'll get immediate access to all my free content. It will be delivered right to your email inbox. This is the best way to make sure you don't miss out on any of my free content. To sign up, go to BibleMountain.com, click on Follow, and there will be a place to enter your email address. Once again, thank you for watching BibleMountain.com.